Hi YouTube, welcome to uh, another one of my videos. Um, I mentioned the other day on my um, shed update I was going to pull my list to D out and we sprayed the fuel tank. Well I've pulled out from the corner now, I haven't done the tank yet as you can see it's all listed up there in a minute. But I thought I was uh, go run it today. Um, last time this engine was run was on my open day back in August. August. Um, before I gonna crank it over, um, I recommend well, after a list of these been sat around for quite a while, uh, take this cover off here, these four screws, um, take the plate off and give it a little bit of oil on the bottom of the um, con rod, if you know what I mean, onto the crank shaft. Just got a bit of oil in there because sat for a long time, it will work its way to the bottom. Um, obviously, take your plug out, give that a good clean up, put them back in. Um, fuel float is all cleaned out because when I bought the engine, I clean it out so it ain't dirty. Well, I hope it ain't the engine should stop. Um, fuel tank is quite a clean tank, you can't really see on this video. Uh, the camera, that well, what is a clean tank in there. Another thing to do is take uh, this cover off here. Uh, then obviously you can get to the access to the top of your uh, valves on the engine. Hang on, pull them up. There's your valves in the engine. The exhaust one, I think, and the inlet one now, I think. I might be wrong. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, just give a little couple of squats of oil in there. Uh, and then you've put the handle. Oh, where's my handle to? Get your handle put in the side here. And then you can always just give it a little turnover just to see. Yeah, it's alright for turnover. Um, mag, um, you can always clean the points up again before you're using it. I haven't done that today, so hopefully it'll be alright after being sat around for a while. Uh, Squat a little bit of oil on the top there to your chain. And give it again, give it a couple of little turns of the handle just to get it to move around a bit. I haven't uh, set pump up today. I must put new bearings in this one. But it's been alright since I had it like that. The bearings in the engine are absolutely fine. There's no play in them at all. Um, governor, just make sure everything's tight on it. No one's been fiddling with it. I'm the only person coming out of this shed anyway, so I shouldn't fiddle with it. Uh, so let's put this cover back on a minute. And then we'll see if she will start. I don't worry about putting a cover on uh, too tight. I always leave it loosely so I can get to it all quite often and oil them up. Obviously, take that cover off, check your oil level. Just unscrew that, lift it off. I won't take it off now because it normally overflows, but I always put fraction a bit more on what it should be. Squirt a little bit of oil in your little wick here. This should be like a sort of rope sort of candle wick sort of thing in there but this one's missing it but just give it a couple of squirts of oil uh, take that nut off in there and give it a couple of pumps of oil in there um, squirt a little bit of oil in there on your governor spline obviously a bit of oil on that joint that joint there a little bit of oil on that joint so to start this engine you turn your fuel tap on there which it is on I haven't put no fuel in the tank today I only put it in the float, just unscrew the top, fill the float up for just a, sh a short run. Your water normally go in here. Um, to start this one, turn that one right back as far as it goes. This one's got a stop in it. Some of them uh, don't have a stop, so you can spin them right around. But this is 1949, this engine. So you turn them to that setting, and as he starts, when you feel him pick up, turn back to there, leave it for a few minutes, and then turn back on about there, that's what this one runs like. So I'll put them back to that way. Um, your handle, obviously down here, this one pulls back to you. Always put your thumb this side of the handle, not like that, because if your back kicks, obviously you lose your thumb. So it makes sure it does that. So I'll put you over here so you should hopefully start up in a minute. I'm praying it will. Right, fuel's on. Your water obviously not goes now, but we haven't bothered out today. Just move it forwards a bit. Don't you see it there? You should be able to see it there. Yeah. Spark plugs all clean. Oh, again, I don't know if you can see it. Little brass grease there. 
Put some screw up, check he's got grease in it, give him a little turn on. So are we ready? Well, I just stopped it. <laughs> um, should we see if it starts out again, shall we? I might hold the governor down just a bit too much. Normally it'll run quite slow. Obviously it hasn't been warmed up for such a long time. It will run a bit slower again once it's warmed up, but... I uh, bought this in from back in uh, September 2011. My uh, first stationary engine I bought for a collection. So I know I'll get rid of this one. I've quite a few people would like to buy it of me, but I will sell it. Always keep your first engine, try to do, if you can. I did repaint it, uh, built a trolley for it, um, done all the pump up. Edge and went right back down to bare metal and started again. We did on that one. The pump, I never took back to bare metal. The only reason I took the engine back to bare metal is the um, where it's a bigger flat area so you can see it more. The pump don't get so worn, if you know what I mean. The engine gets petrol and oil and heat and everything. So much to do, done properly. Uh, the fuel tank I had to do again. It's the paint that's on that, it's the stationary engine paint uh, for the stationary engine parts. The paint for the actual engine is alright. It takes the heat and oil and stuff, but it won't take the petrol, it's not any good for petrol proof. So I do the tank again. I'm not doing the whole engine because the whole engine took me about three weeks in the first place to do back in 2011. So I'm gonna shut off mid, shut her off. You can only turn that tap sideways. Obviously there's no fuel in it, so we don't need to do that. We just screw that one back around there like that. Your floor line's off. It's starting to build compression up a bit, it hasn't been ran for a long time, see. Uh, normally if this was full of water and it was running for quite a while, a few hours or so, it'll obviously be steaming away. So once you shut off, just let the water cool down. Don't try drain it as hot, because as you drain it too hot, the cask can always cool down too quick and it'll crack. <coughs> There's almost uh, the tap there obviously drain out, but I always still have about an inch of water in there. Because when I, um, a couple of years ago, went back and broke my foot, I couldn't get down my shed for a few, uh, about six, eight weeks, I couldn't walk around. And when I came down eventually on my crutches, I had a look in there and it was a frosty, icy morning. And I seen it froze at the bottom, I thought, oh dear, here we go. But I managed to um, squirt some de in there, and I put a stick in there, and it was only about half an inch in there. But I always keep antifreeze in the bottom of it when you do it. Uh, another thing for you, a tip for the winter months you want to, put a bit of um, oil in your water on the last run before you put it into storage. Um, once you drain it, the water, the oil will come down the sides of the uh, sort of block to protect it. Stop building the surface rust up. Um, when I last year, when I uh, had the engine running out in the garden, I thought it uh, had gasket went because oil came down around here but come to find out as well I've oiled the mag chain so much it splashes up and comes on the groove and comes around and it drips down the front here and the sides it ain't nothing to do with the head and you look really closely you probably can't see on the camera but there's no splitting on the gasket uh, or the paint on the gasket so that should be going to a show in about three weeks time first show 
I didn't take it anywhere last year except for my open day and had it running a couple times here last year. It's quite a reliable engine. Probably the most reliable one out of the collection. Uh, the walls are normally quite reliable, that's behind me. But the, the valves always slip and stuff on that one. This one's being alright, touch wood, as we say. So, thank you for watching my YouTube video of um, how to start a list today. Um, there's quite a few of them on uh, YouTube. I might not do the best, but when you search for how to start this today, hopefully one of my videos will be there. You've got Steam Wallys there, you've got a few other people, so they'll explain in the same sort of way of starting. So thank you for watching my video and join me again. Cheers and go on.